Okay, we're going to do a quick tutorial on creating uh, a wood texture, uh, which you can use for wood floor or for any wooden surface. Um, and I've created three slightly different textures, and I'm just going to show you how I created these uh, and how I would use them. So the first one here, I've created different maps. If I double click on here and I click view image, you can see the maps which I've created. Um, I used Arrowway textures for these, uh, but still I had to make them seamless and do various other bits with them. So these are the maps I've created here for this first material. Now this render is this one. So if you look over here, this took 24 minutes and 58 seconds to render. Um, now these other ones took 14 minutes and 13 minutes, but if you look, you'll see these reflect less. So that's most likely the reason this one took longer to render uh, was because it's reflecting so much more. Okay, so if we have a look at this material, I'll show you what I did. I went into Photoshop and I put a black and white mask on top and then for the glossiness, I only wanted subtle differences. Uh, so, I put this curves here in, and I just simply raised that up, and it just made the whole thing a little bit brighter. So, that's typically what I would kind of use in this case for a glossiness, and then for reflection, I use an exposure and the curves, and what I really wanted was I wanted to see this uh, contrast going on here. Uh, but I don't want to put that in a glossiness, I just want to put that in a reflection slot. And the way these looked were, that's the exposure. So I just brought that down slightly, pushed the gamma up slightly, and the exposure up. Yeah. It doesn't have to be these exact settings, the idea was just to create more contrast here. And then I put a curves just to make it again more contrast. The dark's darker and the light's lighter. So that's how I created the reflect and the glossy. It's really black and white and then in this case just slightly brighter and in this case more contrast. So then if you put these in here so this is the reflection, reflective one, and that just went straight into the reflective slot. And then this one went into the bump, this one here, just slight differences with the bump, and also into reflection glossiness. Now when I did do these, I adjust this blur amount all the time. Uh, often, yeah, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, I'll do something like that. Sometimes for diffuse, I can leave this at one, you know, in most cases, I'll take this down to about, again, 0.2. Uh, yeah, it kind of depends on what I'm doing, but basically, you know, you can set it at 1. I'll often have it at 0.2. If you want to see the difference, open preview window here. And you can see all this noise going on here. Yeah, if I put this at 1, it's, that, it's not really going to go, because that's being caused by the this. This bump is a 0 0.01. You know, you can go 0 1, but you're just going to get tons of noise unless you set your render settings high. So I never really set this that low. Uh, hang on, 0 0.001. Oh, it's not even letting me do that. Okay. Um, you used to be able to set it at 0 0.001, but somehow they don't like you doing that anymore. Anyway, you know, if you set that at 0.2, which is also enough. In this case, you'll see that noise disappears. So I'll often go 0 0.1. Well, no, in this case, I'd go well, maybe 1.5. Yeah, that should be fine. You get a little bit of bump going on, a little bit of detail, uh, but not too much. You know, if you leave it at the default of 1, everything just gets too smooth and you lose all your bump detail that's not there anymore. So that's why you bring this blur down to something where you can see and the bump looks correct. Okay. So that was the first one. And the other thing which I do 
if I check these these marks, it will turn those off. So when I'm creating material, you know, I normally I'll start with something. Let's just take a material here. So I'll go, oh yeah, I want to have uh, a wood texture in there. So I'll get the wood texture and I'll put it straight into the diffuse. And then I'll say, right, well, it needs to be reflective. So I'll make this somewhat reflective. And you need to see what's happening. So you have to click up here and click show background in preview. And your glossiness set at one is you're just never going to have wood really that's that glossy unless it's been, you know, polished. Uh, but let's say 0.7. Okay, and that's just too too much. So 0 0.5. That's too low. 0.6. And you know we could bring this way up. So maybe something like this. Or what I'll do is I'll turn off for now, and I'll bring this way down. And I'll put it somewhere like that. And some of you will say, well, it's a wood floor, it should have Fresnel, and you know, yeah, you're probably right, it, it would. But uh, also, maybe it's really dusty. <laughs> All right, so we turn on Fresnel. And I'm not liking it, like that's too high for my liking the reflection and getting too little result. So I'll turn off that, and I'll just bring this up to adjust it to. That's about okay. Okay, good. So I look at that and I go, yeah, that's that's what I'm expecting on the wood floor. That's the glossiness correct. You know, if I bring that down, I'll push it up. Yeah, I get that where I want. And this, and this, I get that where I want. So it's always a mix of the two. But now you've got the, the diffuse in, so now you're going to bring in your reflection map. So you put your reflection map in. And okay, in this case, it made very little difference. Okay, so then you bring in your reflection glossiness map. And now it's completely different. So you can go back into Photoshop. You know, you can take this image in Photoshop and brighten it. That's one thing which you can do. But if I open the preview window, there's other things going on here which I don't really like. See, it's the level of this is completely like here it's shiny and here it's completely dark. So there's too much contrast going on here for my liking. So what I tend to do, so what I tend to do is I'll come in here and I'll look at the maps, and I'll drop this glossiness down maybe to you know so the map. This is how much the map is being used, maybe thirty percent, and I'll drop that probably down to about the same. And then what you have by doing this, what you have is you have. You have the contrast, you have the details coming in and out, but you don't end up with too much contrast going on, too many details. You know, a lot of people, when they do CG, they overdo the materials, and you don't really need to overdo the materials. You need to do them correctly. And you, if you want them to look photoreal, then you make them look photoreal. You don't make them look, you know, like a CG texture. Which, uh, let me see if I can find an example, you know. You know, if you want an example of something overdone here, you get all of this, you know, data here on its destruction and everything here. Everywhere you look, it's been damaged and and battered and everything like this. And you go, oh, yeah, it looks great. Well, yeah, but it's too much. There's too much going on. Like, when did he get into this battle? When did he get all these scrapes? You know, I get it. The guy's been in battle, but he didn't. Not this much. Not this degree. Not where every single little piece of him has got corrosion of some sort or another on it. And so that's what I mean. You, you get CG artists and they go, yeah, I can put corrosion here. I can put some corrosion here. I can put some more stuff here. I can put some dirt in there and da 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 da, da. And I can paint it on here. And da. and it's like, okay, great. But don't overdo it. Just do it enough. If you, if you, you know. Know which battles the guy's been in. Know what's been going on. Pay attention to your to your character, and then give him the correct amount of of detail. So, if you have these up at a hundred percent, you end up with too much, you know, variation going on here, and that's what I'm trying to say. So I set this down at about thirty, and about thirty, and I basically get a blend here of the map and the material which I already created. 
Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. Now, in addition to this, in this case, I want these planks to be very slightly different. Uh, and if you take a look, you see this one here is darker than here, and this is darker than this one, and that one's darker than that one. And you just see this very slight variation, darker, lighter, lighter, darker, darker, lighter. So the way that's done is that's done with this multi-texture, which you can get from these guys, CG source, www.cg-source.com. And if you click manage textures, the way I get it in here in the, is maps, general, uh, multi-texture. And it comes in with nothing attached. So you just click manage textures, add bitmap, and I just choose anything. And then I take the bitmap I want to use and just assign it in there. Uh, don't, by the way, drag that out. If you drag that off and there's nothing in here, like if you want to get rid of it, you have to click manage textures and remove. If, if you drag it off, you're going to crash. Uh, you're going to crash max. And when you try to restart it, you're gonna every time you open a material editor, it's gonna crash and you won't be able to get into your material editor. So don't take that and drag it off and drop when you've got something assigned. Anyhow, so that's how you get the texture in there. And now you, we've got this one texture, this is unwrapped here. So we want to see a change. So we just have to have one coming in and the gamma down to 0.8, which just made it lighter. By default, it was at one, and I thought that looked a bit too dark, so just lightened it. And then random percent 0.15. Uh, I'll often go as low as 0 0.05, so there's a very, very slight variation, but in this case, 0 0.15 worked really nice too. And then this distribution, um, if I bring this down, you'll see it's all at the top, so it's all at eight plus 0.15, so that's 0.95. And then as you come up, it brings it down the other way. So if I go up to 100%, it's all at 0.8 with 0.15 added on, so that's 0.65. So basically, this is how much it swings each way. And I think I had it at 20%, and I had 25 and then I desaturated slightly down to 90%. So that's what my mulch texture did. It just added in that randomness and made it lighter. So, oh, and this blur, I thought I lowered this. So what happened was when I was making the material earlier, I lowered this down to point something or other. And this multi-texture overwrites it. So you've got to, if you want it 0.3, which is probably about what I put it at, uh, you have to adjust it here and not here. Because if you adjust it here, it's going to go back to whatever this one here says. Okay. So that was the first material. The second material here is basically the same multi-texture coming into the diffuse slot. Okay. Now, bear in mind, the difference here is this. So that was the first one. The second one is like this. So... That's the same multi texture going into the diffuse slot. Sometimes you're in a rush, so you're looking at how you can get it done quickly. So I put the same one here into the bump, same one into reflective glossiness, and um, reflective glossiness I lowered to 30%. And then I put this into the reflection slot. And this color correction, all it, what it did was really brought down the saturation. You still get some color in there, and if you look here, you'll see this has got some color, it's got some brown being reflected, whereas this one was black and white, so there was no color being reflected here. And again, you can see here, Fresnel was at 2, reflective glossiness 0.7, reflection amount 1.13. Okay, so for the third one here, which is a very similar material, all right, so I wanted to show this. On the third material, and this is why I did the third one, you see that one? So... This color correction, which goes into the reflection, this is entirely the same as this one. The only difference is this color correction. So this color correction here, um, the brightness I pushed up and the contrast 
I pushed all the way up here, all the way up to 100. And you can bring it down and you can see the difference, but I wanted to do it all the way up. What's at zero? What's down here? Contrast all the way up. And this brightness, I made it slightly brighter. I didn't want to go too bright, I didn't want to burn my eyes out. Uh, and I desaturated again here. If you leave it up here, you just get all that color coming in. So I desaturated. Oops. So that's what that was for. And there you have it, really. So this was with using contrast. This was not using contrast. And you can see you get a lot more detail coming through here. Now you could tweak these obviously, you know, maybe you go, oh yeah, but you know, this one uh, has more reflection or this one has more reflection. I like that reflection, but I like the color coming through here. So what I was showing is you can still, like here you've got a lot of contrast going on because I created the maps by hand in Photoshop. This one here, you don't have the contrast because you're just using one map. This one here, you're using one map, but with contrast on. And you can see that contrast, that detail, coming back into the material. So those are three different ways, really, of creating a wood floor material or a wooden material. And that gives you some idea of my basic structure when I create a material. I'm always messing with this percentage here, putting it in, getting the material the way I like it, and then putting in maps, dropping down a percentage, right-clicking here, open preview window if I want to see what I'm doing better or closer, opening it up and taking a look at these details and dealing with it from there. All right, I hope that helps.